Hello and welcome back to another computer sluggish video. Today we're going to be taking a look at my top 5 most favourite emulators you can get for Windows. And to start off with, in 5th place we have the EPSXE emulator, which is a PlayStation 1 emulator. As you can see it's on my screen right now. This is by far the best, in my eyes, emulator when it comes to PlayStation 1 games. As you can see, you can also get it on your mobile phone now as well. They're always releasing new updates for this program, making it better, more stable, and making it smoother for running games. As you can see, if I go through the menu now, you've actually got quite a lot of options. You've got five slots when it comes to saving games, and also obviously five slots for loading games. We can enable logs if we want, and if we go into configure, we have got a ton of options when it comes to configuring our video settings. As you can see here, there are a lot of options, which makes it handy if you've got a slow computer, you can obviously tweak this program to run, to, well, just to run really well on your machine. And also if you've got a really powerful computer, you can obviously push this to the max to run really nice. Let's just close that down now and let's have a look at the sound options. As you can see our sound options, there's not as many, but it still offers sound options which is great. When emulators, normally they're quite limited. Also we've got our BIOS here, which we can select multiple BIOSes. If I press cancel and go down, we've got our memory cards here. And let's go across to options. We've got CPU overclocking, we've got CPU mode, we've got GT hacks, and we've got our language, and we've got cheat codes, and also game profiles. So you can have multiple game profiles. And that is about it when it comes to the EPSXE emulator. Like I said, it really is one of the best you can get when it comes to PlayStation 1 games. And next up, we've got the PCSX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator. Like our last emulator, the PS1 is a nice, easy, simple layout. If we click on System, we can load up our ISOs from here. Also, there's an option here to enable cheats. If you like playing the old PlayStation 2 games, but you're fed up with doing the hard level, like some of those games they did used to be really hard, just whack on the enable cheats and you can get through that level easy. Maybe with a nice invincibility cheat. If we go across now, we've got CD, DVD, and we can select our ISO from there. And if we go to configure, we got emulation settings. If I click on there, we've got lots of options here to either make the program nice and stable for your system if you've got a slow computer or you can push it to the max if you've got a nice powerful computer. This emulator does require quite a decent processor. I've got an i7 which it would be fantastic on but if you're running like a dual core 2 or an i3 you may struggle a little bit running the PlayStation 2 emulator. If we go down now there's lots of options here as you can see which you can tweak to obviously make run smoother on a dual core 2 or an i3 which is absolutely great. We've got loads of game fixes here as well if you're encountering problems within the game. If I press cancel now and go on to configure again we've got other options here you can select your controllers and USB options there, firewire and if we go across to MISC we got our about and we got a console which is here which tells you any errors you've encountered what's loading what's going on within the games and we got a debug debug option and that is it when it comes to the pcsx2 And next up we have Project 64. This definitely was one of my most favourite emulators back in the day. I remember running this a few years ago. I used to play on it all the time. Absolutely loved it. It meant I could play my Nintendo 64 games on Windows. I mean, yeah. Super Mario, loved it. 
If we click on file, it's fairly sim similar to the last one's disk. It is pretty much laid out nice and easy, not too many options. We can choose our ROMs there, which are our N64 games. And we've got a couple of options here if we go on to configure. And as you can see, nicely laid out there. We've got our resolution, full screen. And anti-analyzing if you want to turn that on, depending on how powerful your machine is. And if we go into options again, we've got audio, which not too many options there. And also we've got controller, which you can adjust your controller. If we click off that and go down to settings, as you can see here, there's not too many either, which is great. You literally got to pick your game on, load it up, and you're ready to go with the Project 64. That's why it is a fantastic emulator when it comes to Nintendo 64 games. And in second place, we have the Dolphin emulator. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard about this emulator. This is a GameCube slash Wii emulator. Yes, that's right. They actually have a Nintendo Wii emulator. I mean, that is Wicked. That is absolutely great. And I can tell you this emulator really does do the job. I've played quite a few games on it and it is great. I can't tell the difference between playing on my Nintendo Wii to playing on here. They are both identical. Especially when running AI7 like I am. If we go across through the menus here, as you can see, there's quite a few options. We can configure... We've got our general, we've got our interface, audio, we've got GameCube options there, and we've got our Wii options. We go across, we've got some path directories there, and we can enable CPU clock override. If we close that off now, we can click onto graphics, and we can change it from OpenGL all the way up to Direct 3D12. But this is only experimental at the moment, which means you may encounter a couple of glitches and bugs if you run this mode. We've got enhancements here, and we've also got our hacks. All these options are great, like I said in my last video, if your computer's not really up to the job, you can tweak around with all these settings in graphics and sound and yeah configure anything to make it suit your machine which is why dolphin is another fantastic emulator plus why wouldn't it be it lets you play nintendo wii games and gamecube games come on you can't get much better than that and in first place we have blue stacks this is by far the most best emulator you will get on Windows. It allows you to play Android games on your computer. Yes, you can play Android games with your mouse and keyboard. That is awesome. And as you can see, it's really easy to get, to get the games. All you have to do is press this little download button and you're done. As you can see, I'll press the download button now and I'll just press install, accept. And it's downloading. It's as simple as that. It now download and install. It even adds the shortcuts to your desktop so you don't have to keep loading up blue sacks trying to find your games. You can simply boot it up from your desktop. But it's still just as simple when you load up blue stacks. You can go to my apps, and as you can see, all my games are there, and there's Clash of Clans alert. It's already added. It's as simple as that. And it runs smooth as well. It's not laggy, it's it is smooth, especially on a machine like myself, but if you do have a slow machine, there are still options. If we go to our settings, we can turn the resolution down, we can turn the DPI down, and we can go to engine and turn our memory up if we need to, and we can turn the calls up, which will help improve game performance. We can change it from DirectX to OpenGL. We can also go back and we can have multi-instances, which means I can run Wild Chef, Clash of Clans, and Dragon all at the same time in different tabs. Which is why this is one of the best emulators as well. Because those games, when you've got to wait a couple of seconds for things to load, you can just keep switching between games. You, you cannot get much better than that. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button below and let me know what is your favourite emulator. Comment below and if you agree with these ones, let me know.